Exhilarating, hard-hitting, unbeatable. HBO Sports. And now, the HBO Sports presentation, HBO Boxing After Dark. After Dark is back from Lincoln City, Oregon. Tonight, you'll see young Fernando Vargas, 154-pound world champion, taking on mandatory challenger Ronald Winky Wright. And 130-pound champion Diego Corrales, recent conqueror of Roberto Garcia to win that title, faces bad, bad John Brown. Call this show, if you will, one if by land, two if by sea. This area of the Pacific Northwest recently hit with torrential rains and heavy flooding, causing hazardous conditions. But the arena here at Chinook Winds Casino is warm and cozy. The fighters are ready for war, and we're in for a high and dry doubleheader on Boxing After Dark. Hello again, everybody. I'm Jim Lampley. We welcome you to this special edition of HBO's Boxing After Dark. Special, because later tonight, you'll see one of the real rising superstars of the sport of boxing, 21-year-old Fernando Vargas, whose record of 17 knockouts and 17 fights is, for the moment, the highest knockout percentage of any champion in the sport. Vargas will be facing a ticklish mandatory title defense against cute boxer Ronald Winky Wright, even as he also faces some major problems outside the ring. More on that in just a moment. And before we see that fight, in a moment, we'll have Diego Corrales defending the 130-pound title he won just six weeks ago against a formidable opponent in John Brown. Working with me, as always, HBO boxing analyst Larry Merchant. And Larry, as we get ready later on tonight in the main event to watch Fernando Vargas, when Vargas won the world championship at age 21, just turned 21 a year ago, a lot of people felt like maybe that would be, for him, too much too soon. Has it been? Well, he's shown that he's too much fighter. But outside the ring, that's a fire engine of a different color. Perhaps it was too soon. Vargas and his precocious Olympic teammates have all now started to support the lawyers. Vargas himself is still faced with a felony charge stemming from a brawl over a woman. David Reed is in a contract dispute that has put off indefinitely his proposed fight with Felix Trinidad. And Floyd Mayweather has no title fights, no fights scheduled for the foreseeable future because a rap star has told him that he's worth more money than anybody would realistically give him. Inside the ring, a young fighter with a title may have to face an opponent he's really not ready to face yet. Hello, Winky Wright. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be the main event later on this evening. Normally at this moment, I would turn to world light heavyweight champion and HBO Boxing After Dark expert Roy Jones, who even though he has a title defense coming up on January 15, is trying to make it all the way from Pensacola, Florida, here to Lincoln City, Oregon tonight. But because of bad weather in this part of the country and the long travel schedule today, Roy isn't here yet. He might make it. But at this moment, I will turn to Larry and ask you the question I would normally have asked Roy. We get ready to see Diego Corrales, who won a title just six weeks ago, celebrated for a couple of weeks, then just four weeks ago got noticed that he had this fight coming up against John Brown. How easy for Corrales to get back in gear and get himself ready to be fully prepared for the title fight tonight. Well, my first thought, Jim, is that uh, youth sometimes is wasted on the young, or a fool may soon be parted from his title. 
from all the reports we have, he's not in great shape. He came here on Wednesday at least five pounds overweight. Then there was a rumor that he had been seen eating a bowl of pasta, but I have it on ex exclusive authority that it really was a bowl of milky clam chowder. He's not in good shape. He says he's young enough to overcome that against a fighter of John Brown's stature or mini stature. We'll see, but he's giving John Brown his best chance. It's the Mutt and Jeff fight of the 130-pound division, as you're about to see. Both fighters are already in the ring. So let's take a look at the titleist. Diego Corrales, he won a mild upset from Roberto Garcia. This is a six-foot, 130-pound fighter. And he has an interesting genesis in the sport, unbeaten. Yeah, his mom and dad were workers in the city government of Sacramento. He himself went off the track and became a serious gang gang member, then got back on the track in boxing and now says winning a title is a working man's dream. And across the ring from the lanky Corrales is the dependable John Brown. You've seen him twice before here on HBO. And at five feet three out of Atlantic City, this is one of the toughest customers among great club fighters in the sport. Yeah, uh, in 10 years as a pro, he's only been stopped by Shane Mosley and he's trying to build a business nest egg now, and he owns a barber shop and a bike rental shop in Atlantic City. Yesterday, in late afternoon, Brown easily weighed in under the 130-pound limit, and then Corrales took three hours to make weight for the fight, and uh, that poses some difficulty for him, you suspect, as he gets ready for this fight. Tale of the tape for Diego Corrales against John Brown. You've already heard about the Mutt and Jeff dimensions. Corrales at six feet, Brown five, three and a half. Nine inch age advantage for the young titleist from Sacramento. Eight inch reach advantage. He finally made weight three hours late at 130 and has put on 18 pounds since then. 18 pounds while Brown put on 13 pounds himself. Well, that's about just about 15 percent of his body weight and really tells you what he went through to make weight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Diego Corrales John Brown fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no standing gate count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, thank you, Harold. They're ready to box. Let's go up to ring announcer Mark Barrow with the official introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Convention Center here at the Chinook Winds Casino in Lincoln City, Oregon, for an evening of HBO Boxing After Dark. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the Celeste Tribal Athletic Commission, the chairman in attendance, the Honorable Mike Darcy, and commissioner also in attendance, Lee Jenkins. Tonight's bouts are under the promotion of main events in association with Chinook Winds Casino, Ringside Tickets Incorporated, and Miller Lite. Your ring officials assigned by the Celeste Tribal Athletic Commission. Your ringside physicians are Dr. Luis Rios, Dr. Erling Arkansas, and Dr. Robert Arkansas. The timekeeper this evening is Roberta Jorgensen, and counting for the knockdowns at the bell, the sensational Sixto Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first championship bout of the evening, scheduled for 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Judging officials assigned by the International Boxing Federation, President Robert W. Lee, Supervisor in Attendance, Daryl Peoples. Your judges at ringside are from Covington, Washington, Glenn Hamada, from Kansas City, Kansas, William James, and from Portland, Oregon, Dennis Ryan. Your referee for this event from St. Paul, Minnesota, Mark Nelson. Introducing now the principals first in the blue corner to my left, wearing the black trunks with the white accessories. He weighs in at 128 and three quarter pounds with a professional record that reads 20 victories, six defeats, and 10 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Here is the challenge. 
manager, the Eastern Beast, John Brown. Brown. His opponent in the red corner, wearing the camouflage trunks, weighing in at 130 pounds. Here is his professional record, undefeated in 29 professional fights. He has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Sacramento, California, the IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Diego Chico Corrales. Corrales. 12 rounds for the IBF Junior Lightweight Championship of the World. Bring him in here, guys. Beckham. Diego and John, you've already received your instructions in the dressing room for the IBF Junior Lightweight title. I expect a clean championship fight. Just obey my commands and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. John Brown wants to get into a war of attrition. Calls himself a warrior. Corrales is in army gear. Says he's ready for a war. Does he have the conditioning and the energy for a long, drawn-out war? Even Corrales acknowledged to us yesterday that would be one of the big questions in the fight. Could he, Corrales, just six weeks removed from having won the title and rumored to be under condition for this one, be in shape to go 12 rounds if Brown is able to get inside, press the action, and stretch this fight out? Brown's new trainer, working with him for the second fight, former light heavyweight star Eddie Mustafa Muhammad, insists that his fighter has the perfect style for beating Diego Corrales, but Corrales gets started with the jab here, and for the moment, keeps Brown at distance. Corrales normally doesn't use his height the way you would expect a tall fighter to do. He will stay right in there close, and will be willing to exchange. And right now, he's peppering Brown with his left hand. Punch out. Corrales is so laid back in personal conversation. You're startled that he has the intensity to work hard as a fighter in the ring. Right hand upside the head by John Brown. Brown will throw punches from all angles. Anything to make a dent. Right hand, like a laser by Diego Corrales. Brown gets in a little left. Corrales with a left hook. Working well with the left hook is Corrales, and Brown cannot find a way so far to get inside. Keep your head up, okay? Mark Nelson of Minnesota, not a referee we've seen before on HBO. But one with a boxing pedigree, his dad was also a boxing official. Punch out. I got it. Come on. Out. Brown able to step inside from time to time, but generally limited to one punch when he is able to get inside. And Corrales often able, as you saw there, to hit Brown as he's coming in, particularly with the left hand. Very patient, very intelligent fighter is Corrales. He's already slipped twice. They might just be slips, but given our reports of his condition, you just wonder about it. If Corrales watched the tape of Sugar Shane Mosley's fight with John Brown, he would have seen Mosley effectively finding angles, more so from round to round, until ultimately becoming the first man to knock Brown out. This is an easy fight. You understand what I mean? This is a real easy fight. All we have to do, baby, is punch and a step around. Punch and a step around. One side and the other side. Try to pick him up. Try to pick him up with the uppercuts, okay? Watch your balance in the air. Keep letting your hands go. Good boy. 
You see it fall, he's too weak. Let your hands go to the body. When he grabs you, he's tying himself up. Let your hands go to the body. All right, that's all right. Take a drink, now let's go to work. All right, keep rolling. Get the water here. We got I'm it. Don't worry about it. Here you go. Don't worry about it. Keep rolling inside. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep rolling. All right, you do the man, man. You heard Eddie Mustafa Muhammad say he's falling because he's weak. Whether that's true or whether he's hoping it's true is what we're here to find out because plainly Corrales is the thoroughbred in this fight against a war horse. Spilled water in the corner of Brown. That's why referee Mark Nelson made them, made them wait for a moment to begin the second round. By CompuBox numbers, round one, a good, well-balanced oh, no, no. round for Corrales, who landed Punch 24 of 55 punches, including 10 of 24 jabs. beat Roberto Garcia to win this title. He beat an exceptionally well-schooled boxer puncher. And brought more thunder than Garcia. Might have been a surprise to some. Garcia, who's trained by his father, who also trains Fernando Vargas. Blood coming out of the mouth now of John Brown. Partial product of the tattooing he's gotten early on from Corrales' left hand, but now Brown begins to get inside and penetrate Corrales' defenses in the way in which he and Eddie Mustafa Muhammad had planned for him to do. Corrales would like to throw uppercuts, as you can see, but Brown is so short, I'm not sure you can get to him with an uppercut. Corrales able to punch down at Brown. Be interesting to see if that leverage advantage shows up in power punches later on. Corrales to the body and the head there. Brown's job, if he can get inside and he has to work to get there, is to throw combinations of punches once he gets into punching range. Corrales is really hurting him with these punches. He's landing stiff, hard punches. He's countering so well with the left hand yeah. as Brown comes in. Break the punch. I got it. Hard hand by Corrales. Good punch. Corrales has been trained in the sport by his stepfather, Ray Woods. The man he identifies as truly his spiritual father's biological father was never a factor in his life. While he had hard times, as Larry pointed out, he had his rough period as a gang member. Part of his goal now is to make his stepdad proud of him with what he does in the ring. I got it, don't punch. Here we go. Good job. Another good round for Corrales. It was only six weeks ago, October 23, when Diego Corrales ascended to the world championship. Not that well known despite his unbeaten record coming in against Garcia. He got the drop on Robert early and used his superior height and leverage to pound away with power punches. You see the blood next to Garcia's right eye. This action from round seven when the fight was stopped in favor of Corrales, a TKO victory against a quality champion fighter. And one thing Corrales has done, as you can see since then, is to grow his hair back. <laughs> Another outstanding round via CompuBox numbers for Corrales. This fight is for the junior light, a, a version of the junior lightweight title. That's 130 pounds. And Corrales has come in here at 148, which is junior middleweight. He acknowledged to us yesterday that he wouldn't be surprised if at some point in his career he fights as a welterweight, 17 pounds up the scale from where he's fighting right now. Of course, the biggest name in the 130-pound division is Floyd Mayweather Jr. 
Brown with a scorching right hand up the side of Corrales' head, but Corrales, unfazed, sticks with his structure, firing the jab. He landed 19 of 31 jabs in the last round. And a good one-two combination startles John Brown. I think if he gets away from him, Brown will just fall down. But he, he got a little excited there. Let's see if he can, if he has the, the pool to deliberately dispatch Brown or whether Brown has just already revived himself. Freak, I got it. No, 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 punch. Brown has such thick legs and good balance. He's more startled than anybody when he gets wobbled like that, but it was a vicious and perfectly thrown one-two. Right uppercut lands for Corrales. Left hook. Accurate punching by Diego Corrales. Now Brown is managing to sort of roughhouse his way out of trouble here. And Corrales will go back to work and look for another opportunity. Straight right hand lands for Brown. And he gets in a counter inside as Corrales reaches. And now Brown starting to punch more accurately as Corrales commits a little bit, looking to land more damaging punches. And there's a straight right hand plus on the face of John Brown. And John Brown is about as tough as a fighter can be, is wincing when he gets hit with some of those shots. With that willowy upper body, Corrales doesn't have the look of a power puncher, but he has good balance and leverage on his punches. Uh, one of those tall, skinny guys who somehow musters power. By great technique. Exactly. Freak, no punch. I got it. I don't know. Put your hand. Put your hand. Balance, leverage, timing, all of those factors probably more critical in, in the development of punching power than the muscles in your arms or your back. Ten seconds. John Brown trying to fight back. Round three has been a big one for Diego Corrales, who scores the knockdown and seems to have taken early command of the fight on the scorecards. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. Let me get the water. Can I get the water? Nice and relaxed. You okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Keep rolling aside. Keep rolling aside. And when you step out, step back in with a jab. All right? Step back in with a jab. All right? Uh -huh. Looking good. Just don't pull out. Right. On the camera. Huh? Okay. Chico, you notice know when you bend your knees? It's no problem. If you want to try to punch me later. Here is where Corrales throws a nice little soft jab. A tough. A little bit of a left hook and follows it with a straight right hand. Look at this. Boom, right there on the chin. George Foreman would love that because Foreman insists that too many fighters throw too many hard punches, that sometimes you have to lighten up to set up the hard ones. So let me correct myself. There was no knockdown in the round and therefore probably not a two-point round. Brown throwing that chopping overhand right. He's landed that a couple of times. Maybe his most damaging blow. Corrales has been accurate with the jab and extra quick with the left hand as Brown has been coming in. By CompuBox numbers in round three, Corrales landed 31 out of 78. This is a, a beautiful style is to watch. And if he comes out of this the way he's looking right now, we have not seen the last of this young man. 
There he, there he throws a quick lead right hand, something we hadn't seen before. Comes over the top with it again. Very quick with the left hand as well as he shows you there. It's been an impressive performance so far for Diego Corrales, who was rumored to be under condition. Took three hours to make weight yesterday. Gained 18 pounds, 15% of his body weight between the time of the weigh-in yesterday and entering the ring tonight, and has been brilliant for the first four rounds here. But he's throwing 65 punches around. So how long can he last at this pace? Brown looking to find some way to get inside without getting tattooed, but he hasn't been able to find it yet. To have a chance to win in the late rounds, Brown will have to make this a war of attrition, accept that he's going to take a lot of leather from Corrales, as he's doing right now, and try to keep the pressure on in hope that the taller fighter will win. First of two fights tonight on Boxing After Dark. This one for Diego Corrales' 130-pound world championship. And still to come in the main event, Fernando Vargas of Oxnard, California, will be defending his 154-pound crown. An attempted punch after the bell by Brown. There's Vargas, 21-year-old rising superstar, facing what's regarded as a complicated challenge tonight against a slick southpaw named Winky Wright. And of course, Vargas, as Larry Merchant's already pointed out to you, facing problems outside the ring as well, which could be a distraction for him. Relax. Relax. Yes, Mr. Fine. You look sweet. sweet. Just like every day in the gym. Yeah. Just yeah. You pick it up, John. Be first and keep your hands up and let him go. Let your hands go. All right? The body shots is right there. He's starting to tie now. Let's go. Let me go. Come on, you got two hands, baby. Come on, Copy two hands. box numbers in round four. Another Sorry, brilliant no. round for Corrales by the numbers. 33 of 61 overall, 22 of 38 jabs. We go now to round well, five of a scheduled 12. Harold Letterman, how do you have it a third of the way through? Jim, so far it's a no-brainer. Hey, what a nothing. Here we go. 40 to 36, oh, Diego Corrales. You know, Jim, one of the points we talk about in scoring a fight is ring generalship. You know, a lot of people say there's no such thing. Watch Diego Corrales. He hits you with a double a double left hook or a double jab, and then he steps to the side. He gives him angles. He's never right in front of him. That's why Brown can't hit him. Doubles the left hook, steps to the side. Good ring generalship. Well, I have it four rounds to none, but I made that a two-point round the third round because I thought that Corrales did so much damage to Brown in that round. So you have it 40 to 35. Yeah. Either way, up his neck. it's an uphill fight for John Brown who busts Corrales with a left hook on the chin. Best punch of the fight so far for Brown. And just almost imperceptibly, you begin to get the vague impression that Corrales might be slowing down. Brown working to the body. Corrales not throwing as many punches now as he was in the earlier rounds. Punch out of there. Break. Don't punch. I got it. Almost inevitable that Brown would at some point warm to the task. He's willing to risk almost anything to make his presence felt in the fight. Now Corrales starts to pump the jab again. And the left hook. But this time he doubles with the left hook and stays right in front of John Brown instead of stepping to the side, as Harold Letterman had pointed out. Hey, don't punch. No, 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 I got it. Yet another potential small sign that Corrales is beginning to tire. John Brown is just so strong, so determined, it's, it's almost not human. Oh, he's different. 
back when he was training under a wild eccentric named Malcolm Perkins. We told you the stories of him living in the woods and using wildly unusual training methods. Here he eats another couple of hard left hands from Corrales and keeps on coming. He did fire uh, that trainer and the others in that corner after the Mosley fight. And now Brown working to the body and backing Corrales up. Continues to make his first real statement of the fight here in round five. Ten seconds. Interesting round. The sort of round you wonder if Brown gets gets simply because he did so much better before than he did before. Okay, get your hands up. Get your hands up. Hey. Chico, don't let him come back to the fight. If you let him come back to the fight, he's free. Don't let him come back to the fight, okay? Don't let him get back into the fight. You're doing good. Okay? He's dead. He's dead now, Jack. Now you want it? Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Let me see you want it. Do you want it? Grab his leg on him. Grab his leg. Grab his leg a little bit. Grab his leg a little bit. Just like that. Come in. Show me you want it now. He's dead. The end of the round. Get the water here. Good job. Brown went to town on. Corrales and by CompuBox numbers in that fifth frame Brown had a 22 to 15 edge in power shots first numerical advantage of any kind in the fight for John Brown Come on step on the middle here Come on give me a clean fight and you heard Miguel Diaz saying to Corrales don't let him back into the fight now Corrales slips for at least the third time in the fight this time because of moisture on the beer advertisement sign in that corner and that was enough of a fall to shake him up for a second or two. Uh, and I think also to encourage Brown because he believes that he's weak and that he has to fight him tough and keep fighting him and wearing him down and get him in the last three or four rounds. Hard left hand by Brown as he comes in. Corrales not quite as elusive as he was at the beginning of the fight. John, okay, here we go. Brown still not often able to throw three and four punch combinations when he gets inside. And Corrales still able to pop him with the left. Frequently as Brown tries to come in. Corrales there using the left well and stepping away. A bit of a welt under the right eye now of Corrales. And of course, if he gained 18 pounds between last night and today by taking in an awful lot of fluid, he might be a little more susceptible to swelling under and around the eyes than would normally be the case. Double left hook by Corrales. Another left hook by Corrales. Corrales using superior technique to take back some of the momentum in this round. Morales says he hurts his hands in every fight. He arrived here yesterday with a markedly swollen knuckle on his right hand. In this round, in particular, it begins to look as though he's trying to win the fight with one hand. Good left hand that he just landed on ground. Morales kind of pawing with the right hand, but in this round at least, not throwing it with authority. Doubling and tripling up with the left hand. But really still, still dominating John Brown. Because of his superior range, quickness, and technique. Uh, it looks like JB on the rocks. Boxing After Dark, the HBO telecast where you do see the round card girl, and you're looking at Carmen Palumbo 
who is a model from Huntington Beach, California, and has an ongoing promotional relationship with the beer whose logo appears on her singlet. Singlet? I think it's a singlet. <laughs> You tell me, all right, but you're not doing it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me see you doing it. Yeah. Let me see you doing it. Yeah. I wanted this as much as you. All right. Now go to him, hands up, and double, triple. Let your hands go. Right. Move that hand. Stop throwing one punch. Right. Let's go. Second time. Yeah. CompuBox punch counting experts tell us that Corrales didn't throw a right handed punch in the last minute and a half of the preceding round. So we'll watch to see what he does with his right hand here in the seventh round. Good job. Corrales did land 25 of 60 punches, mostly throwing the left. Brown only throwing 44 blows in that round. Now Brown trying to work to the body and loading up on a combination for the first time in the fight. Presses Corrales back toward the ropes. And Corrales says, come on, come on. Hoping that Brown will not do what he's now doing, which is getting too close to him, but letting his hands go to create some openings. Mark Corrales goes back to throwing the uppercut with the right hand. You saw him throw three or four of them in a short span of time there. So if he's hurt the hand, he's probably just committing himself to ignore it and go ahead and use the weapon. Good right hand inside that time, Jim. Come on, don't hold his lap, okay? All right? I got it. We asked Corrales what he would do with the increasing piles of money he'll earn if he's able to hold on to his title and go on to bigger and bigger fights. And he said, I like rides. I'll find some roller coasters. Oh, right to the body, left to the head. John Brown keeps coming. Continuing to press the issue, trying to be a factor in the fight. Quick left hand turns Brown's head to the side. Great play. I got it. That's all right. Corrales is so quick with the left, both the hook and the jab. There he throws a right hand with commitment. So at least in this round, he's gone back to using the right hand. Right hand lands. Brown seemed unprepared for it. Now John comes back with a three punch combination of his own. Five feet three against six feet. 130 pound weight class. Both fighters well over 140 as they enter the ring tonight. John Brown keeps saying, come on, come on. I don't know why he has to encourage Corrales. He, he is coming on. Clean break. Step back. Time. Another decisive round for Diego Corrales. Good fighter. The summer 14. Tune in for another edition of Real Sports with Brian Gump. This NFL season, Steve Young, Troy Aikman, and a Bronco Chris Miller have all missed time due to concussions. We'll follow Chris Miller as he assesses the risks of returning to action. Also, we'll show how sports trading cards have, in some people's opinion, become a lottery for kids. Real sports, where nothing is out of bounds. Simple as possible, okay? Oh, next round, Dale. Don't stand in front of him. Get your combinations, get off to the side. He can't do that. Some water on Seven rounds out of a scheduled 12 in the book. Wake up. Move, move, move. You won't. Let's go to work. Move your head, baby. Move your head. Two hands. Come on. Why with two hands? Let your hands go. Harold, what's the rule on 
on coming unshaven into the ring to the point of almost having a beard. Okay, Larry, it's very simple. If, if the beard is long enough to cushion the blows or scratch the opponent, it's too long. Then the commission should make him shave. But generally, the commission won't make him shave unless the opponent complains. So if Brown would have put in a complaint, then the commission would have made a decision whether the beard was too long. But those are the two criteria. Scratch the opponent or cushion the blows. In round sellers, or seven, I should say, Corrales landed more than half his punches, 25 out of 49. Brown only throwing 44 again. The general feeling here is that that's not enough. Brown needs to be throwing 55 or 60 punches around and putting more pressure on Corrales to try to wear the larger man out. It's all right, I got it, very clean, good job, guys. Corrales has limited Brown's punching opportunities by raking him with the left hand over and over as Brown has tried to make his approaches. Hand speed on display there for Corrales. One, two, three, one, two, three. Six punches launched before Brown could fire anything in return. It's a Gatling gun against a handgun. Once again, knocking that looping right hand onto the side of Corrales' head while playing pity pat to the side of the ribcage. That's all right. Lincoln City, Oregon. Geographically, one of the most beautiful places we've ever been. Yet another casino operated by Native American tribal interests. Making its mark in the sport of boxing. Maybe we'll be back here. More left-hand work by Corrales. A 1-2 inside. Brown just unable to get off as Diego Corrales showcases his multiple skills. Brown is doing a lot of shucking and jiving and trying his best. It's just not good enough against a younger, more skillful fighter. Ten seconds. Another slashing left hook by Diego Corrales right on the button. Time! Sorry, good job. Good job, John. There's an abrasion on the upper part of the left ear of Corrales, no doubt from those looping right hands by Brown. Now, if you want to be a second-rate fighter, Keep on fighting the way you Hold the stomach out right here, man. Hold the stomach out right here. Keep fighting the way you're fighting. You're I'm fighting. Always, you fighting. Fight. always hold this out. Always hold that out. Hands up and go after this pump. Right. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Got this nothing. Got the finish. We don't have nothing in your face. Drink. Yeah. Million dollars. You're looking good. You're looking good. Let's Fine. keep that side to side music. Get your combinations. Get off to the side. Fine fresh, okay? Read this. Give me something to bolts. More. Mount Peach. Right here. Second time. Let me see what's right. up. Got you both hands. Both hands. Here you go, Come on. What Eddie go, Mustafa go. Muhammad is really saying to John Brown is Come on. go out there and make your big effort. If you get knocked out, you get knocked out. But don't be a second rate fighter just trying to survive. Through eight. Well, I tell you the honest guys through Jim. I don't think John Brown's won a round yet. I know he came close in the fifth, but even that round, Chico Corrales just bangs him with that double left hook and that hard left jib. The quick stop and a left jib, and I don't think well now John Brown's figured out he's got his own land a couple of good ones. This time Brown busts Corrales with a big right cross. Step One of his man. better punches of the fight. Corrales seems unfazed by the blow kind of looked over here as if to say i'm okay don't make too much of that one of the surprising oh, things oh, about corrales him being this 
tall, skinny guy is how well he takes a punch, at least the punches we've seen him take from Roberto Garcia and John Brown. Exactly right. He doesn't have a thick neck, has the willowy upper body as you see, but seems to shake off big punches with ease. Hard right hand right to the upper body of John Brown. Another one to the side. John, don't hold him, That's okay, here we go. Resourceful fighting by Corrales. As Brown held his left arm, he whacked twice to the body with the right. Now comes back to the body with the left. Suddenly, Corrales focusing on Brown's body as JB continues to try to press in. Cobra-like left hand, dominating the fight for Diego Corrales. Above the heart, Corrales' tattoo says, pain for love. What was this you told me about? His ex-wife auctioned off his title belt on the internet? Yeah, he had one of those minor, minor title belts. And he hocked it, and she went, well, she went and hocked it. They're divorced now. Uh, it meant a lot to him. It's a minor belt, but as we have learned, these belts cost a few hundred dollars, but emotionally, they're very important to prize fighters. And he was kind of devastated by it. He bid $1,000 for the belt himself. Wasn't enough. So here's a new danger of the internet that we had not considered before. Your estranged wife can auction off your title belt. Each Thursday, tune in to the show the pros watch inside the NFL. Join up with Len, Nick, Chris, and Jerry. Now let's do it in proper order. Len, Chris, Nick, and Jerry, left to right, as they show highlights of last week's games and take the week's first look at Sunday's matchups. And please make sure you note the new Thursday start times for inside the NFL, 8 p.m. and midnight. Those start times now in effect, Eastern and Pacific. Relax. 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 Through the last quarter of this fight. Meanwhile, you were looking at a CompuBox graphic that shows you in one way what kind of man Corrales is. He's the kind of man who has out jabbed John Brown brilliantly. Now, here comes the Brown rally. Brown bursting out of the gate in round number 10, trying to reverse the damage immediately against Corrales, and he landed a couple big punches in that fusillade along the ropes. Don't hold, no more holding. Here we go. Every time Brown has seized the momentum momentarily with a flurry like that, Corrales has taken it back with quick, accurate use of his left hand. This is the kind of work Eddie Mustafa Muhammad wanted from John Brown, that's for sure. Uh, he, he got to him finally. The Eastern Beast. How good would Corrales be if he was in top shape? How well would Corrales do against Floyd Mayweather? I'm already dreaming about this fight. Brown snapping Corrales' head back with the left. And now whipping the right hand again over the top. And again, 
Corrales gets hit with big punches and is unfazed by them. Brown is just doesn't hit hard enough. And punching up, he doesn't have the leverage that Corrales has punching down. Well, he's never been a big hitter. He has to out-hustle his opponent. And he's just been out-hit here. Oh, a clean left hand that really stunned Brown for just a moment. And here he comes right back. So both fighters have shown you their ability to take big punches. Neither one is a devastating one-punch threat. Incidentally, as round 10 comes to a close, I get word from our production truck that because of the bad weather here, Roy Jones has not been able to depart from the Portland airport in his helicopter. And in fact, uh, the helicopter has been instructed not to make the attempt to land here. So we're not going to see Roy tonight. We'll see him instead on January 15th. Good night, Roy, wherever you are. Come on, Bleak. Big one. Oh, we hope his hotel in Portland Take has HBO and he gets to see a good performance here okay. by Diego Corrales. Pick the spots, Pick the spots no and get off. water like this. No. Okay. okay, no more. Okay. Pick your spots and get off. Like, throw me some speed in it now. Show me that good jab, right? Come on, baby. Take a drink. Nice and relax. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. Show me your jab, John. This is what I'm saying. Show me your jab, right? Brown's early fusillade in that round got him off on the right note. Corrales getting a little bit careless here. In round 10, this is pretty remarkable. It doesn't happen all that often. They both threw 52 punches. They both landed 20 by CompuBox numbers. Jim, so do you think that uh, Roy Jones lost his unified announcing title here tonight by not showing up? No, because we don't replace him. <laughs> we approximate him. But his stuff is slightly different than our stuff. Just as George's stuff is different than our stuff, Larry. That's why we love having either or both around. Well... The uh, forecasts of uh, Corrales' demise due to poor conditioning were uh, Good job. not accurate. Well, it shows what happens when you're when you're young and foolish but strong. I mean, when he took three hours to make weight yesterday, everybody around here was saying, "Oh, this is a setup for Brown. What a great opportunity!" The Corrales has come out. And by and large, fought the full ten and a half rounds so far. Come on, get out of here. Another whip at left hand, stopping Brown in his tracks as he tried to come in. This guy is tremendously accurate and effective with the left hand. The jab, the hook, the uppercut. There's Brown busting Corrales with the left hook. But again, the taller fighter just shakes off the big punch. Eddie Mustafa Muhammad told us that he knew Corrales well for years of watching him train in Las Vegas with his previous trainer, Kenny Adams. And Eddie said, I don't think he can take pressure. Well, he's handled pressure brilliantly tonight. Now, I would say that, that Brown's only shot was to invest a lot into a body attack, attack early in the fight particularly with a fighter who is not supposed to be in top condition. Brown landed a low blow on Corrales, and Corrales didn't even flinch. Takes that punch well, too. 
Oh. And there you saw Corrales grimacing after he landed the right hand to the top of Brown's head. He has definitely hurt his right hand in this fight. Five seconds to hold the Yeah. Even if you have good hands, you could bust them up on John Brown's head. Give me some water, give me some water. Drink, chico, drink. Put some water. Man, you got a full drink. You got a full job, time. man. Give me a good, clean last round touch ball. Let's Let go to work. Inside this round, round, what you need? Work. Now, let, let your hand go, John. Mm -hmm. Let your hand go till you can't go no more. He's right. More water. Chico. Give me a big round. Use the cannon right now. Don't get hit with anything. Don't worry about tomorrow. Yes, if you got three months, don't, don't worry about it. Don't get hit with anything. Don't get hit with Use your right hand. I am you the man. You can steal him. You can steal him. You can steal him. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, you see Corrales grimacing after he just grazed the top of the head of John Brown with his right hand. Harold, how do you have it coming to the 12th? Jim, very big for Diego Corrales. 109, 110 rounds to one, Diego Corrales. The only round I thought John Brown really won was the ninth. When he pulled inside, rushed inside like he always does. But in the ninth round, he landed some more good, clean right hands. Otherwise, Diego Corrales just nails him on the way in. And this should be a very easy win for Diego Corrales. I agree with you on the right hand. And also, Larry, I think if Diego Corrales did shave, he would have made the way to that earlier. <laughs> I just hope that when and presumably if he gets the decision that he doesn't take this as a sign and he doesn't have to get in shape in the future. that he only takes it as a, as a sign that he didn't have to get in shape for John Brown. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're going to fight fighters who are 25% better, 50% better than John Brown. Well, logic tells you he's not going to take too many more title defenses on only four weeks' notice. Well, that he certainly has learned. But he got $40,000 for winning the title, and he's getting $140,000 for defending it tonight. And that'll buy a lot of rides. Excellent performance. Once again, Corrales slips and almost goes down. Nothing stops him from punching accurately with the left hand. John Brown still pressing forward. Committed warrior that Brown is. Still trying to do something to make an impression in the fight. But not enough skill and not enough range to deal with Diego Corrales, who is a force in the 130-pound division with that long, lanky body and the super quick left hand. Pretty good job of refereeing by young Mark Nelson in his first appearance here on HBO. some iffy organizational moments early on the card here as it appeared that unfamiliar with hosting big events in boxing the Oregon folks were sort of getting their feet wet but this has gone smoothly Ten seconds should be an easy win for a deserving young titleist relatively new to the title scene 130 pound world champion Diego Corrales goes out and shows his stuff against a tough, well-known opponent. talent there for Corrales, for Mayweather, Stevie Johnson, the excellent lightweight champion, 
Angel Manfredi. Joel Casamayor. Joel Casamayor. Um, and of course, Mayweather Jr. So we can look forward to some good matchups in 2000. And of course, there's uh, Jesus Chavez down in Mexico, unable to come to the United States to fight. He would love to lure Corrales to come down and fight him. Harold, your final scorecard. Work him. I got an 11 to 1, 119, 109. Diego Corrales, certainly the cleaner, more aggressive guy. I mean, not more aggressive, but the cleaner puncher by far. Landed a hell of a lot more punches. And I agree with you on a real good refereeing job by young Mark Nelson. That's what boxing needs, good young officials. And they're still gathering the scorecards. And now they're ready, so let's go to Mark Barrow for the official particulars on this decision. Here is the decision of the three judges at ringside. Judge Dennis Ryan scores the bout 116-112. Judge Glenn Hamada scores it 116-112. And Judge William James sees it. 117, 111, all to the winner by unanimous decision, and still IBF Junior Lightweight Champion of the World, Diego Chico Corrales. Corrales. Final punch stat and you can see that Corrales had a bigger margin here than on the scorecards, landing 116 more, throwing 123 more, landing at a higher connect percentage. Larry, what are all those boos about? <laughs> well, I think um, the good folks from Oregon haven't seen enough, enough top professional prize fighting. And I also think that John Brown is the sort of fighter who who sentimentally wins the crowd simply because of the effort he puts into it despite the number of shots he takes. Corrales is a good looking fighter. Yeah, you have to like him. There are a lot of good young fighters out there. We hope we have room to show them all off next year. All right, we'll look forward to seeing more of him and more of the 130 and 35 pounders, as Larry says, down the road. Meanwhile, coming up in a matter of moments, our main event. And it's going to be Fernando Vargas putting his 154-pound crown on the line against a tricky challenger, Ronald Winky Wright. We'll be back with that one in just a moment. Let's look at some upcoming programs. January 15th, light heavyweight champ Roy Jones takes on Westchester County, New York's David Telesco. The all-world Jones makes an encore New York City appearance, fighting at Gotham's newly renovated Radio City Music Hall. Also, thunder-punching Derek Jefferson is back, facing heavyweight veteran David Izon. One week later, a boxing after dark welterweight doubleheader, Shane Mosley, who looked so good in his first fight at 147 pounds, takes on Willie Wise, recent conqueror of Julio Cesar Chavez. Also, young Vernon Forrest makes his HBO debut against always dangerous Vince Phillips. And December 14, tune in for another edition of Real Sports with Bryant Gumbel. We'll look at the Colts' Peyton Manning, who in two years has become one of the top quarterbacks in the NFL. Also, we'll show you the improbable saga of Lehigh's Ronald Jean. Found abandoned in Florida, brought up in a series of foster homes, Jean has turned into a college star. Real Sports, where nothing is out of bounds. And we bring you back live.